team, you know, every time you head off into the back country, you got to be prepared for the unexpected. In this video, I'm going to break out my individual first aid kit that I carry each and every single time that I move out. Started to uh, come down on us a little bit, so we got a quick shelter and a fire set up to stay warm and maintain our core body temperature, which is of the utmost importance. And as you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of, of kits inside of kits. And in today's video, we're gonna go over my first aid kit, right? So, of course, I've had to re-piece and piecemeal this thing together, and I'm currently using a Tactical Tailor E&E kit for it, and I, I didn't know it was an E&E kit uh, styled pouch when I bought it. But I ended up actually loving it because of how I'm able to organize what I have when I put in here. Now, truth be told, and, and it's funny because Grunt Proof and I were chit-chatting a couple weeks ago about using duct tape. And I just released a video. He was getting ready to go out and work on his own. It's kind of... And guys, I got to tell you, great minds truly do think alike. After he published that video, I was already in the works of getting this one put together. And he had published a, his own first aid kit video. Welcome back to Grunt Proof. I'm Randall. We're talking about first aid kits today. Now we're not talking about an emergency off the grid, shit hits the fan. We're not going into combat. I'm and I'm going to challenge and encourage you to go check that out. His is a lot more minimalistic than mine. And truth be told, this may be a lot more than what you need, right? Most of the items I carry in here are not necessarily for myself. They may be for my wife or for strangers I may meet on a trail. But in the event that something happens, I think we're going to see that this kit has what it takes to take care of most wounds and injuries that we can be succumbed to and experience when we're out in the back country. Diane ain't much of a living boy. All right, so when I open up this kit, Riggs is gonna try to help us out here. I think I have everything pretty much well organized. We'll go a quick down and dirty of what I have in the top half and then what I have in the bottom half, right? So in the top half, as you can see, I got some lip balm, right? And then I also have a lighter that is wrapped in duct tape, which of course is my primary means of starting a fire. Now, why do I have a lighter? I have a lighter to do a couple things. One, I can sterilize needles. I can initiate a fire, which of course is one of our primary functions, uh, is to be able to maintain a core body temperature and consume safe water, right? The lip balm, of course, is to keep my lips nice, soft, and supple so that when I get home to mama, she didn't get mad at me. Up in the top, left hand pouch, I have a roll of first aid tape. Set of fingernail clippers, tweezers, and a razor. The top right hand pocket, I have a few pouches of some medication. Uh, in the first pouch, I have some allergy meds, just some basic Benadryl. I have some ibuprofen, 800 milligrams, will cure just about anything. And then I also have a packet of honey, right? So why do I have honey? Of course, honey can be used for any number of purposes, and this is local honey, right? Which is important that you don't just use off the shelf honey. Get some honey from a local beekeeper because it's going to be that much more advantageous to you. Not only for first aid, but again, also for allergies, treating wounds, things of this nature, right? Good stuff. In the top back pocket of the kit, a small tube of Gorilla Glue one bobby pin, a large needle stuck in a piece of cork. Now why do I have a needle? Not only can it be used for sewing, it can be used uh, for popping blisters uh, if you need to. It can also be used as a makeshift means of finding your cardinal directions. It's already magnetized. Suspend it on a string, put it on a leaf in, a, in some uh, small container of water and it will naturally point to north and south. Have a small bar, all right? 
in the event that I do need to take some medication, uh, I can use this to help my digestive system be able to consume that medication and not cause more or further exasperate any issues in my dietary tract, but it also can be used again, help maintain some core temperature by getting everything working on the, on the inside, sustain life a little bit longer, right? I have a small bandage, right? This is a standard military issued bandage that can be used for cravats, can be used for slings, can be used uh, to stop the bleed, even as a tourniquet. And then I also have a small magnifier, right? Now I don't have this to start fires. This is actually not the best one to do that. But maybe you are working on removing a splinter from your hands, right? This can be advantageous in order to be able to see what it is that you're trying to do. Right, of course, one of the problems with purchasing first aid kits that are pre-configured over the shelf, maybe it's on Amazon or something, or Walmart, is none of them, none of them are good, right? And even if you go out and you buy a fancy first aid kit, it has a lot of things that you do need, but it doesn't have a lot of the things that you need. And it has stuff in there that you absolutely don't need. So I'm gonna strongly encourage and submit to you that you need to start building your own kit based off of your area, your health, your knowledge, and your resources, and those who are going out with you and others that you may expect to encounter in order to be a good Samaritan. If you got some ideas as we're going through this of things that, that should have been in, that weren't in, or things that were in that maybe should have been left out, make sure you leave a comment down below. What are you doing? The bottom half of the first aid kit as you can see I have a marker right up on top which is multi-use and multi-purpose right if I do have to in place or employ a tourniquet I can write the time that it has been kept I can also make any sorts of notes that I may need to either on my person the old palm pilot or I can also use my notebook and then working down into the lower portion I got Celex Rapid hemostatic Z full gauze. This particular one is three inches by five feet and it can be used in order to be able to stop the bleed. And then the rest of the kit that I have here in the Ziploc bag is really for all those other ooeys and owies that we find ourselves dealing with more often than not than anything else. Again, this is not a this is not a trauma kit. I, I keep trauma kits in my truck, in my wife's car, in the house, and sometimes I have a smaller one that I'll take out with this backpacking and camping, but this is not what this kit is designed to do. But what is not kept in the Ziploc bag is a moist burn pad, right? Dealing with fire, you may find yourself experiencing a first or second degree burn, and so being able to treat that is absolutely critical. And then inside this Ziploc bag, pull everything out real quick. Have iodine ointment. Antiseptic towelette, a moist towelette. I got a small assortment of band-aids and then some mole skin, right? Having some second skin on us is absolutely critical, especially if you're out rucking. All right team, there you go. Quick down and dirty breakout of my individual first aid kit. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. That way we can continue to keep this conversation rolling. As always, until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.